Why can you touch me? How? My touch is lethal. My touch is power. 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 Because we've both been radioactivated. Of sorts. Real like superheroes. Okay, but why do you care? Why would you list your life for me? Please, 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 because I never thought I deserved you. Are you that kid who's drunk that bit and kicked in front of a school guard while everyone watched and did nothing? That's not one of the proudest moments of my life, but yep. Even though I could have just killed him even with one touch. I wish you had. Okay, I know I haven't talked to anyone for the past 164 days until you came into my soul and the last time I did I also killed a little boy, but this is too dark, even for me. I think it was about a month ago that I read A Very Large Expanse of Sea in two days and I absolutely loved it. And to be honest, I was a bit relieved that I liked it because to give you a better background, I'm Persian and for some reasons I no longer read many novels in my own native language. Most of the fiction I read is in English and you don't have to be a genius to know that modern literature lacks diversity. So when I come across a diverse author, especially if we share the same sort of background and culture and language, I cannot help but want to love their work. I started reading Shatter Me, ready to bitch about it to everyone until the whole world had read it. And the beginning was indeed as intriguing as I wished. But then... But before we get to the review stuff, let me just pause here to say hi. Hi. Yeah. Welcome to Shahzad's Stories channel. I'm Shahzad. I think we were better off just focusing on the book. Our protagonist, Juliet, is living in a post-apocalypse world. Centuries of misusing the nature and its resources finally has fired back at the mankind. And at some point through the drought and the chaos, a group who call themselves the establishment resurfaces, promising everyone that if they are given power and the support of the people, they are going to take everything back to normal back to how it should have been. Right after they gain power and make their reestablishments, though, they start wiping out cultures and history and even the languages for the purpose of creating a new world. A different world that is not necessarily for the benefit of the normal or the average people. They kill off the sick and the old and imprison the unstable ones. Only the strong, capable people are to survive their daily lives. Normal people. And Juliet is not normal. All her life, she hasn't known the kind touch of anyone, even her mother, because even a slight brush against her skin would torture the other person to death. And when she's 14 and accidentally kills someone, her parents finally call the special forces to get rid of her. The novel begins several months after the beginning of her imprisonment in the asylum, where she is starved and doesn't see anyone or talk to, for that matter. Only waits until it's her turn for her cries of torture to fill the cells at night. She waits for death, quick or otherwise. But one day, they throw in a young man into her cell. A boy who is weirdly familiar, though she cannot place why, he keeps asking too many questions, yet offers no information about himself or his life before becoming a prisoner in the asylum. And at some point, Juliet starts to suspect that maybe, maybe he has been sent by the government to read of her dangerous existence. It is, of course, the beginning of the novel. 
Unfortunately, the way the rest of the plot is developed is... I mean, the plot terribly reminds me of Red Queen series. Young, rebellious teenagers having superpowers and wanting to make a stand against the corrupt government. Though, of course, Red Queen was published in 2015, whereas Shatter Me was published in 2011. But honestly, since the beginning of the quarantine that I decided I would catch up on all the best letters of the past decade I've been missing on for the stupid uni entrance exam, I've been let down. Over, over, and over again. I've been giving two stars more than four or five stars. I. I'm so shocked that I might actually reread Red Queen just to see if I actually enjoyed it or I was being too forgiving. Generally speaking, Tyra Murphy has a fancy writing style that I actually really love, but I've discovered that it's not necessarily liked by everyone, so you gotta see if it is your cup of tea or not. The mood of a novel can be associated with rage and depression, and violence, of course, and that I believe is most of the trigger warning you would need. Oh, and child abuse. There is no romanticizing toxic parents and relationship, of course, but speaking of the parents, there was almost no depth to the characters that were described. I mean, yeah, we didn't see them, we just knew that they sucked and that they had abandoned Juliet since the very beginning and hadn't bothered to help. But I just couldn't... I believe if they had been annihilated like any other wire protagonist parents, it would have made more sense that she was never pondering about them with frustration or at least remembering those memories with a little bit more rage than acceptance, you know. Though the issue might have been addressed in later books for all I know. But let's talk about the biggest fault of the book. The romance. Sorry, I just cannot go on even remembering this without any other source of spiritual strength. Regarding all she's gone through, everything Juliet feels is valid. I'm not one of those weird reviewers who are going to say it's not her free, it should have been normalized. Is her situation normal? But the emotions of the love interest make even less sense than the one-dimensional villain of the story. That's it. That's a killing blow. Most of the time, I can even forgive the non-existent plot if the relationship arc is worth the read. But no matter how skinny this was supposed to be, because I heard the book has been censored in my country. It didn't make me feel anything. I ended up skipping those scenes. And you're hearing this from someone who has read five of the Fifty Shades books. And it was about that point in the plot where their relationship became more solid. That it became a tell them show. As if the author herself no longer cared about the turmoil going on in the world she had created. Whereas, I cannot help comparing. In Red Queen, something I loved so much about his work was that it was alive. And I cared about it. Unfortunately, I cannot say the same thing about Shatter Me. I kept reading until 60-something percent of the book. Then turned to the last chapter. And not the weird pickup line at the end of that, nor the epilogue where they were building some sort of classic Wonder Woman outfit for her enticed me to read the remaining of the book. Yeah. I'm of course in no way happy about this, because I purchased the whole series in advance. And then I heard that it's been censored in my country, so I sold them off with a lower price. And then the price of the paper soared up, so there was no longer convenient for me to purchase an original copy. And then I decided I didn't want to wait and I have planned myself reading the ebook. I still have a copy of Restore Me here though. At least you're pretty? <laughs> Oh, my God.
saying the only bookstagrammer I knew and trusted who had loved this series had just decided to leave bookstagram hours before I like reached the 60 something percentage of the book and I couldn't reach her anymore so I posted the question in my stories and an acquaintance who became a sort of influencer considering the population of Iranian bookstagrammers answered that story and start talking passionately about the series when I asked if it was worth reading or not. And that says a lot for someone who doesn't have time to scratch her head anymore, let alone, you know, fangirl over books. And as I also ask around other people, it turns out that it's a hit or miss for people. But... I don't know. I would... Still love to know other people's opinion on the book and why you continued reading if you did. I thought I was invincible, but it turns out that my DNF muscles are still weak. Ugh. I don't know, I might actually give this one more chance. Gonna convince me? Please go Please on. Go on.